It's Friday, and that means it's another edition, number 46, of the Zogby Report, Real and Unscripted. And we are always unscripted, but we're really unscripted, because I had no idea until about 60 seconds ago what I wanted to start with. Because you and I were chatting just yesterday, and we were saying, you know, everybody who tunes in kind of likes what we're doing, but maybe we ought to mix it up a little yeah, bit. All okay. right. So I have no idea about this. So no, you don't. <laughs> um, so I was just driving in, and there there was a news bulletin that uh, President Trump has requested the Michigan state legislature to delegitimize the uh, delegates, those would be Democratic delegates in the state of Michigan, and for the legislature, and, and there is authority to do this, uh, for the legislature to create its own uh, board of electors to represent Michigan. Mm -hmm. And obviously he's asking the Republican legislature to um, decertify those electors, choose Republican electors, then to go to the state capitol mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and vote next month for him for president. This was always part of the strategy, but um, I think Donald Trump should give it up. I think um, that he does not have a legal case. I'm gonna be very honest, I'm embarrassed whenever I see Rudy Giuliani, who I actually had done some work for yeah. when he was mayor of New York, but when I see him in the news, these days as really a shell of the Rudy Giuliani who was America's mayor. And I think that somebody has to send the message to President Trump that we need to respect elections. That there may be, there always is a little bit here and a little bit there, but five and a half million votes is the margin. Let's say it's maybe 5.42 million, uh, that there are a few thousand votes here and there, but that Joe Biden is the president-elect and you ought to step aside. Um, and I would say, not only because it's the right thing to do, but uh, and, and not only because it makes the transition more smooth in a time of crisis, but maybe most importantly, personally, for his legacy. Um, this may very well be the last thing that people remember, the guy who wouldn't give up. Mm. Of course you agree with me, right? <laughs> well, you, you talked about what should happen. Yeah. I'm going to step away from what should happen uh, because I don't know what should happen. Mm. I really don't. Um, what I do know is, uh, well, I'm just thinking of the word fairness, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and we've talked about this many times. You go back to 2016, and there was a clear winner, and uh, Donald Trump was was, was the elected president, and f immediately within a minute, um, there there was uh, the resistance. The resistance had formed. Not only was the resistance from the top down in the Democratic Party, uh, but it was also in the major networks, and so there was a half of the country that even though they didn't use they they didn't do what's going on now. They essentially did what's very similar to what's going on now. That is, they said he's not our legitimate president. He's he's a puppet of Putin. Uh, the Russians hacked our system. They hacked into our our, our election system, and uh, they placed in this guy. And it was day after day after day. And and you know, we were down in D.C. when all of this was happening, and and there were people close to us who were just livid, and and were were you know. Uh, kind of just mirroring what was going on in, in the media, the, the disgust, the anger, the rage. And uh, we saw that, and that played out for four years. And so to me, it's no surprise that the same thing almost happens again. This time there's no talk of foreign um, intervention, but there's talk of massive voter fraud on the part of the Democrats. I I've been trying to read up on this in both spheres you know, the media, uh, the, I'm sorry, the, the mainstream media and the, what you could call, and I, I don't know, maybe this is a negative term, I don't know what to give it, but the alternative media 
And there are just two different worlds of information right now. It is unbelievable that what you hear in the mainstream media, you don't hear in the alternative, and vice versa. What you hear in the alternative media, you don't hear in the mainstream. All I know... They dismiss each other. They dismiss each other. All I know is that we have essentially a repeat of 2016 in which one party is is saying the other party isn't legitimate, and it really should not be any surprise because what came from 2016... I'm going to say objectively, was such hatred Mm -hmm. and such a dismissal. And and really to say that our system was hacked by uh, by foreign rogue uh, people, you know, whether it was Putin or hackers directed by Putin or whatever, I mean, that was undermining democracy. That was a serious blow to confidence in democracy. So we're seeing a very similar thing play out. And what we see as a result is almost what appears to be two nations drifting apart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how can we say that in 2016, you know, uh, you know, well, we didn't really hear it. Hey, Democrats, step down. How can we expect uh, Trump and whoever follows him? You know, if you listen to the mainstream media, they, they say that, oh, well, that the Republicans are deserting him. And, and maybe probably some key people are, but obviously some key people aren't. So... How do you react to that? Well, I'm not going to counter the reality, but I am going to get into um, the moral and ethical aspects of how do we heal. So that what you say did happen, except for one very important thing. Um, Barack Obama welcomed Donald Trump to the White House. Hmm smoothened the transition as smooth as transitions um, can go. Michelle and uh, Melania, um, none of them bonded, to be sure. None of them bonded. I I, I mean, uh, Donald and Melania didn't bond even. Uh, But the the two couples smoothed the transition. And very importantly, Hillary did not... uh, follow through, at least insofar as we know, on undermining the Electoral College. She Mm. conceded, okay? Now, from there, you could make the case that Mitch McConnell and Republicans set up every imaginable roadblock to Barack Obama when he became president. Mm. Go back further to 2000 and say that Republicans um, or or, uh, uh, that, that Al Gore stepped down uh, when in reality I suppose he could have fought it even more. Bottom line is, how do we heal this nation? And does Donald Trump have a responsibility to take that first step? Um, even many of the Republicans around him are starting to get tired of this. Should he not just once and for all concede this election, let the process work itself out, come back and run again in 2024, Mm. or beat the hell out of the Democrats in 2022. Mm. But somebody's got to step down. I'm going to argue that Gore did, John McCain did, Mitt Romney did, John Kerry did, um, and Hillary Clinton did. Yeah, it seems to be that we're at the point of no return. Mm -hmm. Um, That trouble you? Because it troubles me. Well, I, well, you you expand on it, and then I'll... Why it troubles me? Yeah. So we have a constitution. Yeah. And um, while it's old, as these things go, or if we talk in terms of historical epics, it's not that old after all. But, you know, it's 200-plus years old, and there's a Bill of Rights attached to it, uh, that needs to be preserved and protected. But then there are structures and op- operational yeah. and legislative aspects, uh, judicial aspects of the Constitution that perhaps need to be reviewed and tweaked. But what the Founding Fathers did um, as imperfect human beings is they at least created a 
a structure and a system that has worked fairly well um, over the years, and they created a national community. And what I see happening, and it does trouble me, is the end of a national community. I hear talk, sometimes from, from you and your brothers, about um, secession. You know, some are liberal states like California, others are, you know, the mountain states, uh, liberal and conservative. But the national community is built on rights. What happens if we no longer have a national community? Does that empower racists? Does that empower people who don't quite believe in other aspects of the Constitution? Does that empower them, or is the national community essential to who we are defined as a nation? Hmm. Well, I mean, so I mean, it, it all ties together, right? We're mm. talking about a lot of different things, but uh, look, there there was an there was a narrative that was established very early on that uh, Joe Biden was the presumptive winner, and and to my knowledge, that's still the terminology that's being used. He's the presumptive winner. Really, the results are going to come in on December fourteenth. So, what happens on December fourteenth is is what happens on December fourteenth. Um, there is a counter narrative that that uh, emerged uh, shortly after that initial narrative that was saying that there was voter mass uh, massive voter fraud. You know, as an independent, and I truly am an independent, and you know, I hate to say this, but you can look it up. I mean, that's public data. I'm not on the voter list. I haven't voted since 2012 because I haven't really believed in a candidate uh, since 2012. Uh, I, I have no real skin in the game as a result. And so when I hear this counter narrative that there's massive voter fraud, uh, now, if I voted for Biden, I wouldn't want to hear it. And if I voted for Trump, I would believe it. Well, I don't believe it, and I don't not want to hear it. I want to see evidence. And so if there's evidence if, of your own vote. Uh, evidence of that uh, of the counter narrative that mm. that there is massive voter fraud. Mm -hmm. So I mean, like I, I haven't really been presented with it yet, but if there is evidence and and there's you know in the the tradition of Roman law as as clear as day, well yeah I want to see it, and, right. and so well you know whether that will emerge or not. I don't know, but to, to your other point about secession, and or, or no, you asked me, is it troubling uh, that we we may lose uh, national community? Well, yeah, it's 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 especially troubling if it turns violent. Mm -hmm. But if you really have two parties that may not be able to live with each other, and you know, as history has shown. There's the tyranny of the majority, where when one party gets in, sometimes this plays out. This is, hasn't always played out in the, the U.S., but it's played out throughout history. Um, an agenda is, is rammed through. And um, I think we've got to a point in the last several elections where Maybe it just can't work. I mean, if, if, you, if you had the Democrats saying that Trump was only in because of a, a, a hacking job and, and they didn't believe in the legitimacy, legitimacy of his presidency, and now the, the same thing has happened and it's flipped, that looks to me like maybe an amicable divorce is around the corner. It's really only troubling to me if it, if it goes violent um, because I say this because this nation was founded on separation one of our most sacred documents uh, is the Declaration of Independence the, the United States exists only because of that mm -hmm. so so to say that it can never and should never happen again is kind of a logical fallacy I'm troubled by the tyranny of a minority too I mean one an essence of a democracy if not a definition is, is that people vote, and there's a winner, and if there's a winner, the, there has to be a loser. That goes with 
elections as well as uh, legislation. Mm -hmm. um, one side has got to accept that the other won. Now, we do have built-in mechanisms, some very formal, some informal, of checks and balances. You know, in the U.S. Senate, there are all sorts of rules where a minority, even a minority of one, can prevent legislation. Mm -hmm. But at some point, there has to be a gentleman's or a, an agreement between two sides that one side backs off. And what we're seeing here is actually no evidence, not no evidence that has been presented, but no evidence of massive voter fraud. Does voter fraud exist? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Did it happen on November 3rd or in counting of ballots? One has to assume that, that it did. Uh, is it part of our history? Um, you know, those of us who remember the election in 1960 know that uh, when the voting machines jammed in, in uh, eastern Texas, that was Lyndon Johnson. That allowed the Kennedy-Johnson ticket to win Texas. When Mayor Daley, uh, the, the first Richard Daley, uh, uh, all of a sudden there were uncounted votes that emerged from nowhere. And then, you know, we obviously find out that a lot of those are dead people. Sure, that existed, and it turned hmm. an election. A 118,000 vote difference among 65 million voters who, uh, uh, who cast votes, and it was those two states. There has since been. Yeah. But well, 2000, a, right? 2000? The year 2000. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people think, and, and, and there were people who thought in 2004 as well. Uh, I'm one of those. Yeah. 2000 and 2004. Yeah. yeah I, I absolutely am one of those. However, I also know that practically speaking, Al Gore concluded that he would not have been able to govern. There was no mandate. And that John Kerry concluded the same thing, that uh, those votes, contrary to every poll and contrary to the uh, uh, vote counts during the day, those votes turned in Ohio. And uh, polls are showing Kerry, exit polls showing Kerry leading in Ohio substantially and then ultimately losing Ohio. You know, I don't know. that That's a whole other question about the reliability of some people's polls. But um, I think it's time for Donald Trump to give it up. Yeah. There's I, a larger interest than Donald Trump. But, you know, if, if it were the flip side and, and uh, the president won and it, it, it was clear. Probably the same thing. We know the same thing would have happened. So it really just depends on who you really want in office. And so if you want one guy in office, you're going to say, we want him and the other guy needs to step down. But, but the nation is at a point where. <laughs> yeah, but be fair here. Gore stepped down. Kerry stepped down, Hillary Clinton stepped down. The pattern is, and I'm sorry to make this appear to be partisan, but three Democrats did step down. Now, I'm not saying, oh, it's time then for a Republican, but I am saying five and a half million votes separating the popular vote winner and the popular vote loser, um, that's pretty compelling, pretty compelling. Well, are you surprised by any of this? No, but I'm troubled. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not surprised. We were saying, uh, how many times did you hear me say, "I know we'll have a winner. I'm just not sure we'll have a loser in this election," and that, that's playing out. But I'm not proud that I'm right mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, your your suggestion is is for Trump to step down, and you believe that would be the best thing for the nation, but. I just don't think 71 million people are going to be behind that. And so I, if, if that's the truth, if, if, if we could go back and forth on this, and we've already gone back and forth you know, a good bit, but let's just assume he's not going to step down. Mm -hmm. And his, the people who voted for him are going to support him. What's yes. next? What's next is trouble, and we know that. So today, the CDC 
is, is issued a warning that there would not be travel. Now, that's not a fatwa. That's no. not a mandate. That is a warning that with one million new cases this week and 1,800 people that died uh, just yesterday and the number of deaths, the trajectory is going up, that uh, sad to say, but there should be zero traveling on Thanksgiving, that somehow this uh, COVID-19 virus has got to be stopped and stemmed, at least stop the growth of it, if not turn it around enough until a vaccine is more widely disseminated. I say to a great degree we have to trust science on this. I think we have to trust science on a number of things. But on this, um, whether one likes the CDC or individuals in the CDC, these are people that know a whole lot more about epidemiology and Im immunization uh, and immune systems much more than, than you or I do. Mm -hmm. And so I say that we need to trust science. Are you skeptical? Well, I'm skeptical of a moniker, trust science, because to say trust science means that there's a uniform understanding of what science is. It's to say that, well, because, you know, six out of 10 or five out of 10 agree, therefore that means truth. Um, what about nine and a half out of 10? Well, I don't know what the number is, and, and maybe we should do a poll on that, of <laughs> scientists around the world. We're that, available. <laughs> Um, but what troubles me is, is the shutting out of debate. You know, I, I would never debate a scientist because I'm not a scientist. But I, I know that if I'm comfortable in an area and, I'm, and, and there's to be a debate, if I want to shut out debate or I want to avoid it, that's a pretty clear signal to me that, that somebody may could or could be in the wrong. Mm. What I see happening is a similar phenomenon where, where there, there are uh, credible voices that, that are offering alternate opinions, but you're, they're just not heard of. They're either, you know, the, to use the, the new phrase now in social media, they're either doxed. Mm -hmm. which means, you know, they're kind of made invisible on Twitter. Uh, they're not invited on to, to, uh, to debate on whether it's the nightly news or some of these news programs. And, and as a result, a lot of people don't know that there, there is um, a diversity of, of opinion in this, this uh, realm of what, you know, what is science, what is to trust in science. You know, one example, and if you haven't heard it, you should definitely look it up, is the Great Barrington Dec Declaration. Now that's a group of epidemiologists and people within the medical health profession. I don't know how many doctors, maybe it's hundreds, maybe it's thousands, but they've all come and they, they've said that uh, national lockdowns are, are, do not work. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course we talked about this a few episodes ago. I believe his name was David Nabarro Mm -hmm. special envoy to the WHO, who even said, in other words, uh, this is something that we want to use as a last resort, not, you know, as your primary means of stopping the virus. And oh, by the way, it has very devastating effects, talking about national lockdowns. So what I would like to see is more debate, more discussion. Now, of course, somebody could say, look, and you know, in the time of a crisis, there's 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 no there's no room for debate. You shut it down. But then, how do you really know what the truth is? Mm. So, if there really are credible people, which there really are, that are raising all kinds of questions as to what the the CDC may say, why can't we hear what they have to say? What's the problem? Isn't that a red flag? I mean, to me, that's a red flag. I'm going to let you have the last word on that. I'm going to have the last word at this. Suppose there's a polling company that published its final poll the day before the election showing that Joe Biden was leading by 5.6. And then Joe Biden 
apparently as of this moment is leading by 3.7. Would you say that that polling company did well? Absolutely. I would too. I agree. Okay. And this was another edition and we ended on agreement. Okay. Making progress. Yeah. Have a good week. <laughs>